Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we have seen the introduction to C++ programming. And in this lecture, we are going to learn about how to write a simple C++ program. So there are many things that are there that we need to know about while coding in C++. So here in this lecture, we will study about the very basics and we will see what are the main or the basic things that are there that we need to know in writing a simple C++ program. Okay, so let's get started. So coming to writing a simple C++ program, the first thing that we need to know is about functions. Now let's see what is a function. Every C++ program contains one or more functions, one of which must be named main. Now, if you are new to programming, you may not know what is the meaning of function. But if you already have some idea about programming, then you may know what a function is. So we are going to study about detail in function in the coming lectures. But for now, just understand that function is nothing but it's a block of code that is going to perform some operation. Okay, so every program in C++ must contain at least one function and one of the function must be named main. So this is very important. The main function is one of the most important functions and the operating system runs a C++ program by calling main. So whenever you run a C++ program, the first function that is going to be called is the main function. So from the name itself, just try to understand what is main. Main means it is the main thing. So the main function is going to be called first whenever we run a program in C++. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let us see the structure of a main function, how it looks like and what are the things it contains. So here we see a simple version of main that does nothing but return a value to the operating system. Now what does this mean? Let's see. So here in this block, we see it is written int main and there are two brackets and then here within curly braces, it is written return zero. So this is nothing but the main function that we are talking about. Now within this main function, this is the body of the function and it is doing nothing but it is just returning a value to the operating system. And what is it returning? It is returning zero. Now again, if you are new to programming, you may not understand what is this returning concept. So don't worry about it. Everything will become clear. But here what we are just trying to emphasize is the structure of the main function. Okay, so we saw that there are quite a few things inside this function. So let us just break them down and try to understand what are each of the things written in this function block one by one. So we will discuss about the elements of a function definition, which we have seen in the previous slide. So a function definition has four elements. So let's see what they are. So first of all, we have a return type. So we will see what that is. Then we have a function name, which is the name of the function. Then we have a parameter list enclosed in parentheses, which can also be empty. Okay. And then the next thing that we have is a function body. So keeping these things in mind, let's take a look at that code that we saw in the previous slide and try to identify these elements. Okay. So here is the code. And here we see that in the first line, we have int and main and we have the parenthesis. So this int that is written here, which stands for integer is the return type. Now, what do we mean by return type? So again, as I said, we will study about this in detail as we move ahead. But for now, just remember that a function will return something to the operating system. And what is it? It can be anything depending upon the function definition. Now, what type of data is it going to return? That is specified by the return type. So here it is written int, which stands for integer. That means what this function is going to return is an integer type. Then we have this main, which is a function name. So main is the name of the function. So as I already said, this main is a function that has to be there in every C++ program that we write. Now you can also define your own functions and you can give your own names to that functions. So this part is the function name. And here we have the parameter list. So parameter list is also something that we will discuss later when we study about functions. So parameter list will contain the arguments that can be taken by that function. So again, if you are new, you may not understand what is this arguments. So don't worry about it. Just try to focus on this main function right now. So as it is written here, it can also be empty like it is shown in the example here. So here we see that this parenthesis is empty. So the parameter list is actually empty. And then within this curly braces, we have the function body, which defines the operations that the function is going to perform. So what does this function do here? It does nothing, but it just returns a value, which is zero. Now, what is this return? So as I said, the function has to return something to the operating system. So in this case, it is just returning zero. So it will depend upon the function definition as of what it is going to return. So here it is just returning zero because we just have to return something. And here we saw that the return type was an integer. So 
we see that it is returning 0 and 0 is an integer. So, whatever this function returns, it must be of the type integer. So, that is why return 0 is written which is an integer. So, this is just a small example showing the elements of a function definition. Okay, but this is not a complete program. It is just a block of function that we have seen. So, we want to write a complete C++ program. So, let's see using these things that we have learned, how can we write a complete C++ program. So, here we will see the example of a complete C++ program. Okay, so here in this block here, I have the complete C++ program. So, here we see that it starts with something called hash include and within angle brackets it is written IO stream. So, we are going to study about all these things in detail in the coming lectures. So, don't worry about it. So, just know that this is the header for now. Then here we have something called using namespace std which will also be discussed in another lecture. And here we see the main function that we have discussed in this lecture. So, here we have this integer main and within the curly braces we have the statements which shows what this function is performing. So, here it is written C out and it is written here welcome to the C++ world. Now, what does this mean? C out stands for console output and it is used for printing something on the screen in a C++ program. So, this is the syntax C out and you have to give two angle brackets that opens to the right and within double quotes you have to write the string that you want to print on the screen and then you have to end it with a semicolon. So, this is the syntax of printing something on a screen in a C++ program. All right. And then as we already discussed, the integer main function has to return something and that should be an integer. So, it is returning 0 which is an integer. So, here again the purpose of this program is to just print something on the screen which is welcome to the C++ world. But it is mandatory to return something. So, because of that we are just returning 0. Okay, so if you run this program, you will get the output welcome to the C++ world printed on your screen. So, that is how a complete C++ program is written. So, this is just a simple example and as we move ahead in this course, I am going to show you how to actually install the compiler and how to use a source code editor in order to write the programs in a proper way and then we will see how to compile and run the programs. So, we are going to practically see and learn how things are happening and that is the method that we are going to follow in this course. But for this example, I am not going to go to the compiler because this is just an example to show how a complete C++ program looks like. So, anyway this is complete and if you just write the same thing and compile and run it, you are going to get this output on your screen. Right, now we studied about functions. Now, another thing that we need to know about in a C++ program is known as types. So, let's see what are types. So, coming to types, types are one of the most fundamental concepts in programming. Now, what do they mean? A type defines both the contents of data element and the operations that are possible on those data. Okay, so type specifies what type of data element that is and what are the types of operations that can be performed on those data. So, in the previous slide when we discussed about the main function, we saw that it was having a return type of integer. So, there we saw the concept of type already. So, it means that the value that is going to be returned must be of the type integer. So, every function will have a return type and similarly even variables will have types. Now, what are variables? We will of course study about them in detail. But just remember for now that variables are something that are used for storing values. So, even for variables we have to mention or specify what type of variable they are. Like for example, if it is an integer then it means that it can hold integer values. And there is another type called character which is denoted by char. So, that specifies that that variable is of character type. So, we will study about all those things in detail as we move ahead. So, just remember that types are a very important concept. So, we will take an example. When the type of a variable named v is t, we often say that v has type t or interchangeably that v is a t. So, let's say that we have a variable and the variable name is v and the type of that variable is t. So, in saying we say that v has type t or we can also say v is a t. So, here let's take an example. I am declaring a variable here called my variable and it is of the type integer. So, int space name of the variable. So, you can give any name to a variable of course following the naming conventions. So, here in this example my variable is of type integer. So, we can say that my variable has type integer or we can just say that my variable is an integer. 
So that is the concept of type and that is how you will specify and say about the types in C++ programming. Alright, so we have seen what are the basic things that are there in writing a C++ program and we studied about the two important things that is functions and within that we saw the main function which is the most important one and then we also studied about types. Then we also saw an example of a complete C++ program. Alright, so with this lecture, I hope you have understood at least in basic terms how to write a C++ program. So in the next lecture, I will show you how to install the compiler and the source editor that you need for writing the C++ programs in your system so that you can follow with me whenever we are writing any programs in this course and you can also practice for yourself and learn along. So I hope this lecture about writing a simple C++ program is clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.